Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization in the Finger Lakes of New York where I believe right now it is 53 degrees here on Thursday, June 24th, 2021. I I keep hearing all of these crazy rumors about this heat wave baking this planet from, uh, what is it, 110 degrees in Oregon today, uh, in the 90s in Finland today, all over the planet, uh, and, and we're sitting here shivering. I just turned the heater off. I uh, don't know what's going on. I am glad to report that the little dog is feeling better today. No trip to the vet. So anyway, guys, I was going to uh, go through like six or seven stories about, you know, all over the damn planet about, you know, the what do we have, 50 today, right now, there's 50 big ass uh, wildfires burning. A half a million acres are in flame. Uh, in the western U.S. today, all of this stuff about the Arctic uh, on full-scale meltdown right now. Uh, all records are going to be smashed with loss of sea ice. Uh, this could be the single biggest heat wave in the history of the Pacific Northwest about all of this crap going on in Florida with these uh, with the drought and the disappearing water a big article about the Florida Keys getting ready to go underwater from sea level rise there's no saving the Florida Keys or the Everglades big story about uh, this building on Miami Beach this condo on Miami Beach collapsing uh, last night I'm not saying there's any connection between sea level rise and condos on Miami Beach collapsing but anyway guys I could easily make this an hour rant but uh, I am dealing with a scammer uh, your old clueless moron has been a victim of a scam and I have to get down to the bank and save my <coughs> credit card. So anyway, we're going to look at the number one story on the planet, which pretty much says it all. You know, good for Yahoo News sounding more and more like Collapse Chronicles. You know, yesterday the number one story on the planet you know, which I covered, I've already forgotten what the number, oh, about ecocide, and now the number one story on this planet, while I'm shivering in front of a heater, climate change tipping points are upon us, you know, like are upon us, that is the present tense, meaning right now, UN report warns, and the worst is yet to come. Do you think so? Uh, many versions of this story uh, all over. This is just Yahoo News's own distillation of this story. Uh, like here is USA Today right next to it. Disastrous future ahead for millions worldwide due to climate change report wars, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Anyway, but we're going to look at Yahoo News's version of this story. <clears throat> the newest doomsday report from the UN. They do write good doomsday reports at the UN. All right. <clears throat> A draft report by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warns that unless drastic and immediate action is taken to limit greenhouse gas emissions and keep global temperatures from rising further, life on Earth is poised for a catastrophic 
reckoning. And so I'm going to stop right here, guys. Obviously, anybody tuning in to Collapse Chronicles knows damn well that there is no drastic and immediate action anywhere on the table at the UN or anywhere else. So this whole point about unless there is no unless in this equation. We ain't going to do it. Every damn one of us listening to this, Sancho Panza knows that ain't going to happen. And then all of this crap about uh, limiting greenhouse gas emissions. At this point, as the title says, the tipping points are here. If we, if we reduced greenhouse gas emissions to zero today, but you know, human calls greenhouse gas emissions to zero today, it would not change this equation, this doomsday forecast as we're going to, as they talk about uh, later on in this article. So already uh, this is crap. Uh, all of this unless this and this window of opportunity, they actually use the, the window of opportunity line at the end of this article. I am getting so sick and tired uh, of this window of opportunity closing crap. I was reading it in 1948 on our plundered planet. The window slammed shut 30 years ago. The, what you're reading on all of these mainstream media articles are the greenhouse gases we emitted in 1991. The, the, anything we're putting up there today is going to bite us on the ass in 2050. But anyway, I can see uh, how long this rant could take me. I'm really going to try to shut up and read this article. Okay. Life on Earth is poised for a catastrophic reckoning. They, they could have cut everything else out of that. That is the bottom line. Life on Earth is poised for a catastrophic reckoning. The 4,000 page report states that mankind may have already missed its opportunity may have already missed. Mankind missed its opportunity, I would say, in 1970 to keep the climate from passing a series of thresholds that will further spur the warming on the planet. Quoting the report, <clears throat> life on Earth can recover from a drastic climate shift <coughs> by evolving into new species <coughs> and creating new ecosystems. Humans cannot. Yes, of course, that's about a 10 million year timeline. <coughs> the thresholds or feedback loops include the melting of the permafrost which in turn releases methane gas into the atmosphere. This is one of these, you know, this is the methane bomb uh, that we've been talking about here for years. The methane bomb has been fired. It is off and running. It makes no damn difference if, it, if humans go extinct Today, the methane bomb has been set off. The tipping point has tipped. Uh, W-A-S-F. Okay. This, meaning the, the melting of the permafrost, which is uh, going into overdrive right now, amplifies the greenhouse gas effects, pushing temperatures even higher. As a result of the melting of the polar ice caps and loss of sea ice, the Earth absorbs far more of the sun's ultraviolet radiation and heat, which further contributes to more ice melt. You know, this is that famous albedo effect. So anyway, I like when they quote this woman, Jennifer Francis, a senior scientist at the Woodwell Climate Research Center. Unfortunately, Jennifer 
has told me and Ben she is not interested in talking to Collapse Chronicles, so we'll, I guess she's interested in talking to Yahoo News. Take it away, Jennifer Francis, and explain to us what is happening. <clears throat> Quote, I am not optimistic. It's not just because of those feedbacks. It is because we have already put so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and that carbon dioxide lasts a very long time. A molecule of carbon dioxide, one molecule of carbon dioxide on average, lasts about 100 years in the atmosphere. So, we have not yet felt the impacts of the carbon dioxide that we have already put in the atmosphere. Even not thinking, this is still Jennifer Francis, uh, even not thinking about the feedbacks, okay, just get the feedback loops off the table, even not thinking about the feedbacks, we have already got a lot more climate change built into the system just because it takes a while for the climate system to adjust itself to this new level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. All the feedbacks that happen is just making that response even bigger than it would be otherwise close quote. Thank you, Jennifer Francis, for uh, about the, you know, one of the few uh, climatologists with the balls to spell it out. We're not coming out of this, guys. Uh, get out there and enjoy your uh, 78 degrees uh, in upstate New York while you still can. <clears throat> okay, back to the article, since pre-industrial times, the earth has warmed by 1.1 degrees Celsius. And again, it's time to blow the BS whistle on this one. You don't need to be Jennifer Francis to, to know the level of crap uh, on, that, on, 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 that, on that statement. Uh, nobody knows, or we, we passed 1.1, how long ago? And the other thing about this 1.1 is that is a global average. But what this article I don't think says that the, the whole globe isn't the same. The Arctic, for instance, is, is uh, warming at, what is it, uh, two to three times that rate. Uh, you know, at the poles, the, the, there, there's been a hell of a lot bigger uh, increase than any lousy 1.1 Celsius. Um, there's another article in here about Yellowstone National Park getting ready, you know, talking about that. Anyway, <clears throat> in its landmark 2018 report, so three years ago, the IPCC warned us of dire consequences should humankind fail to keep average global temperatures from rising higher than one and a half degrees Celsius. But most climate scientists, otherwise known as I think 97 percent, but most climate scientists now believe that meeting that goal will be all but impossible given the rate at which emissions continue to rise. And as Jennifer Francis just explained to us, if you don't want to take uh, my word for it, it has nothing to do with global emissions at this point forward. Well, obviously, guys, it, for the people, uh, anybody still surviving 30 years from now and, and might have a little bit to do at this point by cutting emissions. Uh, the draft report, which is being prepared ahead of the November meeting of world leaders at these newest UN climate talks in Scotland, also cautions that one and a half degrees Celsius of warming will require humans 
to adapt in ways almost unimaginable just decades ago. Quoting the report, quote, even at one and a half degree, uh, which, we, which my guess is we've already hit, uh, but we're going to hit it in the next year or two if we haven't hit it already, even at, you know, this little paltry one and a half degrees Celsius of warming, conditions will change beyond many organisms' ability to adapt. Current levels of adaptation will be inadequate to respond to future climate risks, close quote. Can you say Mad Max? <clears throat> the cost of adapting to this new reality will be steep, especially in parts of the world where resources are already scarce. Can you say Mad Max? Quote, Wow, guess where they're going to start talking about adaptation cost for Africa. For Africa, where three out of four human beings in the balance of this century are going to be born. Doesn't mention that about Africa here. Quote, adaptation costs for Africa are projected to increase by tens of billions of dollars per year with warming greater than two degrees, the report states. And of course, Africa is shooting. Uh, okay, let's go over to the Amazon. In another tipping point, the Amazon rainforest basin, where plants absorb carbon dioxide and helps keep temperatures from spiking, could soon be transformed into a savanna according to the report. And, you know, Manga Bay has been talking for at least two years that the Amazon rainforest has already flipped. The Amazon rainforest had flipped before Hyder Bozo Nero uh, ever uh, walked into office and unleashed his carnage down there. Uh, you know, I guess Bozo Nero is the only one with the damn brains to understand the Amazon rainforest, the single biggest garden of Eden uh, on this planet, is a goner. He might as well go down there and log the damn place. Uh, it, it's doomed. The Amazon rainforest is doomed. And uh, good old Yahoo News, thank you for telling us this. Okay, we were just, there's just this article about the Florida Keys are doomed. There's no saving the Florida Keys. Okay, the report also notes that coastlines around the world already experiencing sea level rise will be forced to deal with un inhabitable conditions as tropical cyclones continue to strengthen, heat waves like the ones gripping the western United States today, and wildfire seasons that continue to set records around the world will also worsen over time. The summer of 2021 already, we're, we're four days into the summer of 2021, we have a half a million acres in flames. Fourth day of summer. Uh, there you go. Book Hermit, would you like to weigh in at some point on this? I can't wait to hear Book Hermit, who lives in the Pacific Northwest, to weigh in uh, on this new report. All right. Getting back to the report. The worst is yet to come affecting our children's and grandchildren's lives much more than our own. Do you think so? This is the reason why my decision to have a vasectomy at age 22 and uh, was the single best decision I have ever made in my entire life, any clueless moron at this point, bringing a child onto this planet is guilty of child abuse.
forget the planet abuse bringing a kid. I wonder if Jennifer Francis, how many kids? I, I, it was Jennifer, is she one of the, the these climate scientists who had a baby? I mean, I don't know. I'm just wondering. All right. The window of opportunity. Yes, that window of opportunity to stave off dire consequences is quickly shutting. The report warns. Mm, that window of opportunity, I think it was 1989, uh, the UN was reporting the window of opportunity will shut in 10 years. You know, by the year 2000, the window of opportunity will shut. They were saying that in 1989. Here we are. What is it? 32 years later, they're saying the same thing. Let's wrap it up. Quote, we need transformational change operating on processes and behaviors at all levels, individual levels, the individual consumer level, communities, business, institutions, and governments, we must redefine our way of life and consumption. Right next to this story, we have an ad for progressive insurance, where, uh, where I have my insurance, uh, progressive auto insurance, uh, was paying for this article. Um, actually, who, uh, what other ads do we have? Uh, here is something about homeowner. This is homeowner insurance. We won't even get into talking about uh, homeowner insurance, what this all means for uh, homeowners. But anyway, guys, I have got to wrap this up because I have been uh, the victim of a scam about my damn windshield in my gas-sucking truck, and I'm wondering uh, what these damn scammers over in India have been doing with my credit card number. Uh, talk about uh, consumption. What are they saying about just the number of air conditioners in the country of India uh, between o over the next 20 years. Uh, just the air conditioners in India, uh, the load it will put on, on the grid and the planet. Uh, it, it, guys, we are doomed. There is nothing you can do at this point. Get out there and enjoy every day uh, that you can. And it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here on this planet. And I am heading to the bank. Then I'm heading to Home Depot to buy a bunch of shit uh, to make my new tiny house. And then I'm going to the big sand and gravel quarry right down the street to load my gas sucking truck up with a pile of sand and gravel to work on my failing septic system. So I'm gonna do my part today. Bye guys. This little dog, are you ready to take a drive on this gorgeous day? You see, Pop, I'm ready. I'm feeling better. I'm ready to go get chippies on this beautiful day. I don't want to spend all day in that damn truck of yours. Bye guys.